Every new case is an experiment, and if the accepted rule which seems applicable yields a result which is felt to be unjust, the rule is reconsidered. Judge Benjamin Cardozo Justice Cardozo was one of the most influential jurists in American history. Born in New York, he became an expert in commercial law before his two-decade tenure on the New York Court of Appeals. There, he wrote many of his most famous and influential opinions in tort law. President Hoover then appointed him to the Supreme Court, where he solidified his lasting legacy as a respected jurist and the king of tort law. Cardozo established his reputation as an innovative and thoughtful judge with his decisions throughout the 1920s that led to a more expansive understanding of tort law. He starts off with kind of routine cases uh, from the community, from the Jewish community mostly, from lawyers and clients. But after a while, he's very successful and he starts getting more important cases. Cardozo helped provide clarity into whether companies were responsible for unforeseeable accidents in 1928 with his opinion in the case Paul's Graph versus Long Island Railroad Company, where he found that a plaintiff injured in a bizarre accident was outside the orbit of danger, and as a result, the LIRR was not liable. He also had a flair for seeing issues in a fact situation that would have been humdrum in somebody else's hands. One of Cardozo's most famous cases came early in his career when he issued the opinion of the court for McPherson versus Buick in 1916. One day, while McPherson was driving his new Buick, the spokes in the left rear wheel broke, the wheel collapsed, the automobile went into the ditch, and McPherson was thrown out and injured. McPherson bought this Buick from a retail dealer, not from Buick directly. McPherson sued Buick Motor Company for negligently failing to inspect the wheel before they put it on the car. The big question in this case was, can Buick be held liable when McPherson bought the car from a retail dealer, not from Buick directly? Put another way, can Buick be held liable when McPherson did not contract with Buick? Let's pause. To understand Judge Cardozo and the significance of his opinions, it is important to contemplate the rapidly changing American society that preceded and lasted through his time as a judge. For much of our history, the majority of Americans earned their livings in agriculture. Indeed, farmers made up almost 90% of the American labor force in the 18th century. Yet, by the late 19th century, a more capital-intensive commercial farming model emerged, causing an exodus of family farmers to leave for work in newly industrial cities. By 1920, the share of farmers in the labor force had dropped to just 27%. Americans found themselves in the throes of an unregulated and urbanized industrial society running on high octane. As Upton Sinclair said in his seminal book about the era, The Jungle, into this wild beast tangle these men had been born without their consent. They had taken part in it because they could not help it. The game had never been fair. The dice were loaded. They had been trapped and put out of the way by the swindlers and thieves of millions of dollars. Judge Cardozo's opinions often reflected an attempt to correct the egregious externalities of this wild beast tangle in industrial America. At the time of this case, Buick seemed to be well protected from any liability claim. The general rule in New York was that producers were not liable for negligence to third parties. Buick had sold the car to a dealer who then sold it to McPherson. Thus, Buick was protected by what Cardozo famously referred to as the Citadel of Privity, or the idea that a party could be held liable for negligence only if they had a contract with the plaintiff. But noting that precedents drawn from the days of travel by stagecoach do not fit the conditions of travel today, Cardozo launched his assault upon the Citadel through the back door of the dangerous products exemption. Cardozo saw this exemption had been expanding in recent case law and leveraged this exception even farther, functionally turning the exception into the rule. And how will Cardozo navigate a changing society and changing legal doctrine while maintaining legitimacy? Judge Richard Posner, in his biography of Cardozo, 
found that he was cited more than seven times as often as other New York Court of Appeals judges. According to Posner, Cardozo had so much credibility because he shifted tort law in a more progressive direction to adapt to a changing society while remaining committed to continuity in law. Is under control. He doesn't think he's God. You know, he doesn't think he's Moses, the ultimate lawgiver. You know, I think he sees himself as one player with a role to play, and he's going to play that. But he's he's all along. There's a a restraint there, and it's the restraint of the responsibilities of other organs of government. And I think he felt that. Huh. Who knew? Cardozo paraphrases the rule set out in Devlin, saying, quote, For neglect of such ordinary care or skill whereby injury happens, the appropriate remedy is an action for negligence. The right to enforce this liability is not to be confined to the immediate buyer. The right, he says, extends to the persons or class of persons for whose use the thing is supplied. This means that Buick can still be liable even if the retail dealer, their immediate buyer, sells the product. Buick, quote, knew also that the car would be used by persons other than the buyer. This was apparent from its size. There were seats for three persons. It was apparent also from the fact that the buyer was a dealer in cars who bought to resell. In other words, it is reasonable that Buick knew someone else would buy the car from the retail dealer and therefore can be held liable by McPherson. With this ruling, Cardozo dramatically extended products liability. Prior to McPherson, injured consumers could recover only if they had contracted with a product seller, and recovery was limited to the terms of any warranties, making it nearly impossible for consumers to recover through tort. Then, as we've seen, Courts weaken these contract requirements, relying instead on tort law. Now the plaintiff could recover from a manufacturer of a defective product by proving that it had caused the injury and that the manufacturer had negligently failed to address the defect. Courts then abandoned contract law entirely, holding negligent manufacturers liable even when the manufacturers had tried to avoid liability with warranty agreements. Finally, in the modern era, Courts replaced negligence with strict liability. A transformation of the law to protect consumers over the course of a century, thanks in part to the flexibility and credibility of Judge Benjamin Cardozo.